Hello, welcome back to my channel. This video is all about stress on an inclined plane. Let's get into it. We have a rectangular bar. Here is the cross section. It measures three inches by five inches. And here is a side view of our bar. It has three forces applied to it, one, two, and three. Or more appropriately, perhaps I should have done one, two, and three. We have a uh, cut plane BB that's been cut already. So our, our free body is not in equilibrium until we uh, do our equations of equilibrium and determine the force or forces that live in that plane. We have um, plane AA and that one is transverse. Plane AA is transverse because it is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. Okay, so it's perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. Um, B is not perpendicular to the longitudinal axis, right? So we have some other angle there. And so we would say that plane BB is inclined. Inclined. So a little bit of terminology here. Uh, let's start by putting this in equilibrium. I'm going to get my ruler tool out, line it up with this weird geometry. And um, this one you can probably do in your head, my hope is. So in the positive x direction, I have a three kip force and a two kip force. So that sums to five. I've got one kip force in the negative x direction. So five minus one is four. I need four kips of tension at that plane in order to put my body in static equilibrium. All right, the next step that we want to do, um, so this, this free body is fully in equilibrium, so sum of forces in every direction equals zero. That could be x, that could be y, it could be the x prime and y prime axes we're about to set up. And also our summation of moments are equal to zero, right? So if I were to sum moments about that axis coming out of the screen, um, all of those vectors are, their lines of action are coincident with that point. So there's no tendency to rotate. I don't have any internal moment. Okay, so even though this is a simple problem, just kind of reinforcing that your worst case scenario is that you have six unknowns at the cut plane. Here, five of those happen to be zero. There's only one that is non-zero that's left. Okay, let us begin to construct axes for stress at an inclined plane. And the convention that we will use, and this is a sign convention that is not required for success when you're using manual methods, but it will be required for success when you get to using equations for some of these solutions. Here is how it works. I put a dot at the centroid of the cut plane. I will define my positive x prime axis as the outward normal to the cut plane. Okay, and all of that nuance is important. I will define my x prime axis as the outward normal to the cut plane. All right, outward means pointing away from the body. That makes sense. Normal means perpendicular to the cut plane. So x prime has one and only one location that um, it can be located at in order to use what we'll call the stress transformation equations. We know that theta is the rotation that measures from x all the way to x prime. Okay, so here we have a very large angle for that. Let's see if I can make that a little, a little prettier, something like that. Okay, so there is my theta, my rotation from my native coordinate system xy to what I'm creating, which is my transformed coordinate system x prime, y prime. That is a rotation about z. Okay. 
Watch what I'm about to do very, very carefully. Okay. Let me make sure, yep, I'm on a new layer. Okay, so I am going to take this XY coordinate system, and I need to use the right hand rule to determine where y prime is now that I have established x prime. So use your right hand, right thumb in the x direction, right index finger in the y direction, right middle finger coming out of the screen back at you. You want to rotate your right hand about your right middle finger until your thumb is in the direction of x prime. That will work something like this. Do, 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 do. Twisting and turning around. Do, 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 do. Okay. See how that works right there? So as we use the right hand rule, what we see, and this is another important nuance, is that y prime will not go up plane BB, but rather down plane BB. Let's add that back to a layer that we were working on. I'll use a purple color. Get out my ruler. And let's push this one down the plane just like that. That is my Y prime. Okay. Now, again, we're going to solve this particular problem manually. Okay. We're not going to use the stress transformation equations. If you were going to use the equations, identifying the x prime axis as the outward normal, the y prime axis using the right hand rule, and the theta measurement from x to x prime with the sign convention that this way counterclockwise is defined as positive, all of those ingredients are critical to make those equations work for you. I'll just turn down the volume on that one a little bit, add another layer. And at this point, I'm ready to break that four kip force into components that live in the X prime, Y prime coordinate system. The best way to think about this, let's start with X prime. The way that I have had the most success in doing this and teaching it over the years is that we want to offset X prime parallel such that it lines up with this end of the vector. In this case, since our vector is a tensile force, um, it's going to line up with the arrow head, the vector head. If it was a compressive force, it would line up with the vector tail. Okay, do the same thing. So our second construction line here so weird. I don't know why that's not snapping back to, I'm going to open it and close it. Okay, weird. All right, so I want to offset from Y prime right over here and finish that bounding box. So I'm looking at the X prime axis, the Y prime axis, these two other construction lines that I've dashed in, and I want to resolve or break, I'm sorry, I want to break that four kip vector into its two components. There is a horizontal component So unusually, usually when I double click that button, I get uh, vertical and horizontal lines and Gonna have to look at the settings and figure why that's not working today. Um, but here, doo -doo -doo, there is one of the two forces that we need. That will be a normal force, so I will call it N. How do I know it's normal? It's perpendicular to the cut plane BB. And the other one is gonna be, yeah, it's just not working today. Uh, a vertical, vertical line right here. And that one is a shearing force, which is why I'll, I will go ahead and use the half arrow and label this one V. All right, we need to do a little bit of angle work. And we're given a, that 16 pound or 16 um, degree 
measurement, given that 16 degree measurement. And um, we have to figure out where that 16 degrees over here is over here in this triangle. A couple ways to do this. The way that I do it is kind of using my spatial skills instead of using my math skills. So I would grab this triangle right there. It's a right triangle with 16 degrees at that end. And in this case, all I have to do is rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it around just like that. I know the 16 degrees kind of got all funky on us, but that's OK. And it is similar to this vector force triangle. Since I've been constructing this with a ruler, you'll see that they look pretty close. That last one I freehanded, but you know, not bad. Pretty close, right? All right, so we're able to identify where that 16 degrees is. And due to my experience, I'm able to do that step in my head with no trouble. Um, if you have trouble doing that, your other techniques, if you're having trouble with just kind of doing the brute force spatialization, um, spatial force there, is just to go back to what you learned in geometry a long time ago. So find this 90 degree angle. Okay, deduct the 16. And so this will be 90 um, minus 16. Okay, um, figure out what this angle is there by constructing that particular geometry. Use complementary and supplementary angles to cross over in from one coordinate system to the other, and you'll get the same result. It just takes a little bit longer. So as you're able to do it more organically and naturally and intuitively, I would encourage you to work towards that goal. OK, we have our 16 degrees there. And so what I'd like to do is now um, express N and V in terms of my internal force tension of four kips and this angular measurement of 16 degrees. Um, N is adjacent to that angle in the right triangle. So I'll use the cosine identity. So I could write four kips times cosine 16 degrees. V is equal to four kips sine 16 degrees. All right, so a lot of work graphically, but I think it's good work to do definitely while I'm teaching and definitely while you're learning to go to the rigor of, con you know, constructing this stuff geometrically. And again, as you become more sophisticated, you can simplify your process, skip some steps, but good things to do while you're learning. All right, so we've got our forces there and we are ready to kind of answer the questions posed. So it says, what stresses lie in plane A, A and point A? How about B, B and point B? All right, well, let's go to plane. Um, let's do A, A first. I'm going to make my screen a little bigger height. So I have a little more real estate to draw on. And I'm going to get this tool. I need to cut through AA. I actually don't need that part. Let's see what I can grab here. I'll grab my axes. So why? Let's use our imaginary scissors, cut through AA. I'll keep the x axis. I'll keep the force, get the dimension out of there. Okay. Let's copy merge that, edit paste and move this down below. OK, we need to put this body in equilibrium, don't we? I'm going to do a summation of forces in the x direction equals 0. And I see those five kips of equal and opposite tension here on the cut plane. Do I have any shearing force at the cut plane? No. So my shearing force is zero. My normal force is five kips. It is a tensile force. So here are the equations that I could use to solve this. Hey, stress on plane AA is equal to force divided by area. 
my force is five kips of tension. My area, remember the bar is, I've forgotten, let me scroll up, uh, three inches by 0.5 inches. So put that area down in the denominator. And you'll get a value of 33.3 bar KSI of tension. And if we want to illustrate that on A, let's see. I'll go ahead and pull it out because I can with the magic of Autodesk sketchbook and my tablet. So I'll do another copy merged, edit paste. Let's pull that stress out here. Okay, it's a little clunky, but good enough for our purposes. You're going to want to put axes on it. So match the X's and Y from up above. And we just need to show a tensile stress in the X direction. This is stress at a point. Stress at a point is a different idea than stress at a plane. When you're dealing with the plane, you're talking about a stress distribution. And you're talking about a point, you're talking about a value of stress. Okay, so we've got that nailed down. This one looks pretty good. Let's tackle the other one. So let's figure out what stresses are happening at plane BB. I think maybe I'll just kill those layers and add another one. Keep this clean. OK, great. All right, so the stress at plane BB is equal to the force at BB divided by the area of plane BB. We haven't done the area yet. There's two ways to do this, kind of the long way and then the short way. I'll do the short way for this one. The area of plane BB is equal to the area of the cross section divided by cosine of 16 degrees. So we're doing a little vector projection here. Cross section is uh, 3 by 5, or 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 inches squared divided by the cosine of 16 degrees. And at that point, we can plug into this equation. We'll use our normal force that we calculated for kips cosine 16 degrees divided by area 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 inches squared. I'm going to toss the cosine up into the numerator, so I want to square that. And um, it will be tensile, right? That force is pulling on plane BD. And it's going to be equal to 24. 0.6 KSI of tension. Of course, that is to three sig figs, which is how we report final answers typically. Cool, cool. Let's get into our shear stress now. See if I can do this without being too confusing. Here's my idea. See if I can just draw on top of that layer to show you the parallels and where they differ. So let's do shear stress at plane BB is equal to shear force on BB divided by the area of plane BB. The area of plane BB hasn't changed, so we'll use this again. And plug in tau is equal to 4 kips times sine 16 degrees divided by the area of the plane, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 inches squared. Toss the cosine into the numerator like that. Okay. Multiply all of that out, and you'll get a value of. Four sine 16. Okay, so that to three sig figs will be 7.07 .07 KSI. And it is typical for shear stresses not to report a sign. They are reported as magnitude if you're just calculating a number. Um, but we like to illustrate them on a stress element, such as point B here. That's going to be the last part of this problem. So I'll put both of these layers on, but kind of subdue them into the background 
And here's what I would like to do is illustrate these stresses on stress element B. So I'll do edit, edit, copy, merged, edit, paste, pull it over, zoom into it. We need our coordinate system. Bring it up just a little bit. So for my coordinate system, I'm just going to use X prime and Y prime there and there. No need to reinvent the wheel here. As long as you're communicating a coordinate system, you do have some options in how to write that. Of course, the simplest way to communicate it and the most straightforward is to copy and use the same orientation as your other picture. OK, now if you will, if you wanted to turn the whole thing around so it kind of looked more like X and Y like this, you could do that, but you may mislead your audience. You may want to make a big note to be like, note, <laughs> I rotated the coordinate system. It doesn't match the picture above just to alert them to what you've done. So mathematically it would work, but in terms of communicating your work clearly, 100% of your audience is not going to catch what you did. All right, let's do our normal stress first that was the pink one and we came up with 24.6 ksi of tension in the x prime direction so we'll just add that to our stress element 24.6 ksi and here we don't need to put a positive sign or we don't need to put the t in parentheses for tension because the arrows communicate that for us very effectively so that looks fantastic i'll back go back to my layers i'm going to kill that normal stress calculation bring the shear stress one back okay now we've got that one in our little party and our shear stresses have a value of 7.07. .07, and the direction, we just want to match that force. So do you see how this shear force is happening at the left side of point B? We just copy that direction down below. Once you have one shear stress, you can figure out the hidden three. So there's one on the top going that way. There's one right tool okay one going down on the negative x prime face and one going in the negative x prime direction on the positive y prime face watch the coordinate system as i talk through all those signs and we label move that to the side actually Boop. we label this 7.07 ksi all right Let's turn this layer back off. Are we done with this? Are we done with this? Well, if you are in my class and not visiting from a random corner of the internet, you'd probably be inclined to stop here. And that's OK, OK, because that's where we're at. What we didn't do on this problem is also cut this inclined plane. Let me put another layer here. Let's see if I can make this clear. We didn't cut this one. We didn't cut that one. Right, what would that cut do instead of cutting it BB if, we, if this was a completely different cut? So instead, I gave you what I will call CC. Okay. So we cut it CC. Let's see what I can simplify for us here. Let's get this and that out of the way. Oh, 
All right. If we cut at CC, then our whole process changes. So I need the center of that cut plane. It's right there. I need to put the body in equilibrium. So I'm still going to have a force there. Then I need to resolve it into its components that are normal and shearing to that particular cut plane. There's the bounding box right there. Okay. So I do, I would not expect any student that's currently enrolled in my class to make that intellectual leap without watching this video. If you want to tackle it, go for it. Okay. But for now, let's just clarify it like this. Is there a normal stress in this direction? Yeah, there is. We'll call it sigma y prime does exist. Okay, so it absolutely does exist. It can be calculated. You would just use the air, the area of this big plane to figure out that normal force divided by the area, and you could come up with it using the exact same method. Um, but we'll discover a faster way to solve this problem all at once in the next unit. So we'll put a pin on sigma y prime for now. And we'll make one more conceptual comment as we wrap this one up. See this uh, shear stress on top of B right there? You see how it goes in the same direction as that shear force that's right on top of B right there? They go together. So the shear stress you'll get from plane CC will be completely equal to the shear stress you get at plane BB. And to think about why that is, we could revisit this and note that we've got the product of the sine 16 degrees and the cosine of 16 degrees there in the numerator. So even if you swap the direction, you'll get this same value. All right, more on that on another day. Thank you for tuning in. We've got our beautiful stress element solution right there. Uh, there is a sigma y. It is not calculated here. It is tensile, and that'll be a topic for another day. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.